All righty, we got some questions for Pat. We're going to start with this one from Judith. She writes in, is it possible that the closer we become to Christ, the more suffering may come our way? In these current, possibly end times, are those of us who embody the Holy Spirit and walk daily with Christ becoming more vulnerable to dark spirits? My need for protection has never been stronger. Oh, I don't think we ought to be sitting around uh, afraid. But the truth is, you know, it's like an airplane. Um, when an airplane gets to the speed of sound, it begins to be buffeted. And then it breaks through. And, you know, from occasionally I'd fly the Concorde to Europe, and you'd fly from New York, and you'd get over to Europe in about three hours and 18 minutes, I think it was. But um, when the airplane would approach the speed of sound, there was a boom or a breakthrough and buffeting, and then everything was quiet and calm. And I think that's what you ought to think of in your walk with the Lord. When you're out of in and out and in and out, and you're not quite sure how you're going to rel relate to the Lord, you'll be buffeted because the devil will do everything he can to pull you back in. When you get through where you've really made a commitment, then there will be a rest. And the Bible says there yet remains a rest for the people of God. So that's what the Bible says. So you asked me a question. I think that's the answer. All right. It's a great analogy. You're so lucky you got to go on the Concord. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I tell you, <laughs> I was so sad with that thing. Uh, you know, I was on it one day, and, and, and the thing started having trouble, and they landed us in Ireland, and then we had to wait in, mm. in uh, Shannon Island, I think, for a while, and they brought the second, uh, uh, whatever they call it, this section over, and they picked us up and carried us on to London. But it, it was but it was a great experience. Have you ever? You never. I, I never. I never got to. But um, I know back in the in the 90s, it was a big big thing. And then well, it, you you come across the the ocean. I mean, th three hours and 20 minutes incredible. or so. And uh, you know they they think they have gotten that sonic boom taken care of, and there's some <clears throat> some corporate jets that they're building now. <laughs> which will be available for good of me. Excuse me, I choked. Here, here's a drink All right, for you. Uh, here's, uh, <coughs> here's another question for you, Pat. There are a number of YouTube prophets who are strongly urging believers to leave, their, leave the cities and prepare safe havens in the mountain areas for the coming judgments of God on big cities. Many seem to be jumping on this bad bandwagon. Can you address these prophecies and their legitimacy? Uh, I'll say it's a bunch of nonsense. You know, all this survivor stuff, I mean, a few thousand people, maybe 100,000 out of 300 million can get taken care of in that way. The rest of them will, will die. Well, that's not too cool. Uh, and I, I think this idea that uh, we're going to have a little survivor community and we'll have, um, you know, our food and water all taken care of, uh, I, I, there's nothing wrong with having some water, some dried food or something like that stored up so if there's an immediate crisis. But the truth is, it'll take maybe the first few weeks to be the most uh, intense. Beyond that, you, you'll run out of food anyhow. Mm -hmm. So the idea of moving from the city out to the country, no way. All right, no way. All right, this viewer says, my bank has new tech <laughs> services. One is a hand scanner, so I won't have to sign the old way. Pat, is this the mark of the beast? I've always heard the mark would be on the hand or forehead. Well, the forehead means your will and volition. Your hand means your action. So it's, in a sense, symbolic, those terms. But the Bible tells us the time will come that she couldn't buy or sell without the mark of the Antichrist in some fashion. And uh, I believe that could easily happen, and we're getting that way. The, the thought they're trying to do is to put a, a chip in, a, in, a, in a, a microchip into your hand, and that will have all of your life's uh, material, uh, all of the uh, data on you, uh, your health and your finances and everything will be in that chip. So. Is it coming? I'm afraid it may, and I think it may fulfill the biblical prophecy. All right. All right, here's one from Linda. She says, I was just given a severance package from my employer of 23 years. I'm at home looking at all the stuff I've accumulated over the years. I'm so ashamed of my hoarding and slothfulness. 
Do you think God would have me give it away, or should I sell it? Um, dear, I don't have any idea what your status is, and I couldn't possibly advise you uh, <clears throat> on giving stuff away. But a lot of people decide they've got too much, and, and, and stuff becomes a burden. And uh, they, they're they glad to give it to their children or to some worthy causes and to free themselves from all that stuff. And so uh, I, I know when I was up in New York, the Lord told me that I had to sell my furniture and give to the money to the poor and get ready to follow him. But I needed to be free. And, you know, Many of us need to be free, and then after that time, God may accumulate a whole lot more, so it just depends. But material possessions can burden us, and so you're asking, should I, you be free from that? I don't know your situation, but there's a desire in many people not to be encumbered, and stuff encumbers you. All right. Perhaps a garage sale for her since so she's been hoarding all these years, but anyway.